Now I'm at the point you wanna be with me I'm vibing out at a higher frequency Cause everything that I want and I'm gonna be It's when I wake up, that's when I start to dream Someone you love is talking down, here is the plan Let it fall through like a handful of sand Nothing happens overnight, what you must understand If you dwell on the bad, then you don't stand a chance Something you want upset, saying why it ain't mine yet That's because now you have yet to change your mindset People don't put their mind to rest while they're so wired A lot of people go to sleep and wake up tired Power of positivity and persistence say that i can we'll just sit back and witness make an impact when our time is done make money help people and have lots of fun whoa Welcome to Office Hours, hosted by legendary sports executive, entrepreneur, and investor, David Meltzer, with the brightest millionaires, billionaires, and entrepreneurs in business, sports, and entertainment. Get together to talk about success, failure, and everything in between. You have the responsibility of providing value to them. Take a deep dive into the mind of some of the world's most impactful guests. Really, the goal isn't to be disciplined. The goal is for it to be intuitive. To share their strategies and tools to dominate their respective fields. Just decided I'm going to prove them wrong because I feel like this is progressive. This is something that is new and different. David Meltzer hosts Office Hours. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've been doing Friday trainings here for, oops, sorry. Try to get everything started. There we go. Thank you for joining us. That's Jakey Bakey in the background, rocking and rolling on Clubhouse. Today's Friday training is takeaways of the day. So everybody, raise your hand. Give me your takeaway, the lesson that you've learned for this week, and uh, we'll be right on it. So we appreciate Everybody joining us, we have over 80,000 people registered for Friday trainings. Uh, this is your takeaway, your biggest takeaway. This is your lesson that resonates with you. So we are rocking and rolling. Jake's just setting the room. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, Dave, so I will pass it back over to you if you want to share your takeaway of the week, and then we'll bring up Gigi after you. I would love it. So just so we talk about takeaways, and it, we receive lessons every day, and I'm the type of person who uh, used to write down every single lesson. Uh, so I went to college, law school, business school. I went to every personal development training workshop and I used to write down everything. And all I got for that, by the way, the only thing I got for that was a storage unit full of banker boxes of information that I can't use. Um, and so I started doing these takeaways of the week or the month, the biggest lesson that you've learned to really help people to understand how we learn and how to take advantage of everything that we learn. What do I mean by that? Well, what I want you to do is during the day, if anything resonates with you, uh, go ahead and capture it, reposit it, and then create a system, create a system uh, that allows you to access just those lessons that resonate with you. You see, uh, we utilize our intuition to raise our awareness of what's important to us it doesn't have any logic connected to us. We have no reasons connected to it. But if we can detach the lesson from time, quantitative measurements, reason, and logic, we can maximize uh, the unified, infinite system of thought that we take part in. And so I want everyone, uh, as we do these every five or six weeks, the biggest takeaway of the week or the month, your biggest lesson that you've learned, 
to only write down or capture the lessons that resonate with you, knowing that that which your intuition picks up on is those lessons that are most important to you. And it's just a matter of time until it reveals why. So don't try to outthink it, out logic it, go over under it, through it. Don't lie to yourself, deny to yourself. You don't know the significance of what resonates with you, but it will reveal itself. So it's great to capture it and create a system to access what resonates with you. And so that's the purpose, uh, purpose Jake, uh, of that. And we'll have uh, that uh, life is about lessons. Uh, this is based off of the rules of being human and, uh, and to that measure. So uh, my, my takeaway of the week came in a meetup and I do meetups uh, in every city that I go to. I do over 200 a year trying to help people. And the interesting thing uh, that I learned this week is someone asked me a question uh, to compare COVID with the downturn economy. And uh, what I uh, took away from that, as I normally do, the reason I do the meetups are not only to help people and answer questions and make introductions, as Scott says, a fairly connected person, I consider myself a one degree of separation to help people, but I really am listening for uh, what people are uh, paying attention to and what they want to give their intention to. And along those lines, uh, the comparison was important because the similarities between uh, an entrepreneur during COVID and the similarities between uh, an entrepreneur today in a downturn economy is that we should be looking at our skills, our knowledge, and our desire and seeing how our skills and knowledge and desire are aligned with what's doing well today. Because even during COVID, certain things were doing well. And in a downturn economy, certain things are doing well. Then we should move to what's stable today. Uh, just like in COVID, we look to see what businesses were stable, weren't moving, and what is stable in the future. Um, and what's stable in a downturn economy. And then we can look and see and utilize a weighted balance between what's doing well, what's stable, and what we think is going to be doing well in the future. And so utilizing these three points of analysis towards the careers, jobs, industries that are doing well, stable, or you think are going to do well, you can maximize the opportunity as you did in COVID, just the same in a downturn market. Now, the differentiator uh, in uh, the difference, and this is where the biggest takeaway was, because I was like, where is the difference between COVID and a downturn market? It's that the government was completely, overwhelmingly supportive of the small business and entrepreneur during COVID. And during a downturn market, they're not. In fact, they're almost punitive in nature. And as you have higher inflation, higher taxes, uh, and business is going down, you will not get the support that you got during COVID from the government. And so understanding this subtle distinction between COVID and a downturn market, uh, you can uh, take advantage of the options, opportunities, and touches of favor of what's doing well, what's stable, and what you think is going to be doing well. Remember, the stock market is not a reflection of the economy. Uh, the economy is a reflection of the stock market. So too many people think, oh, the, you know, COVID is going to hit, the stock market is going to go down. No, the stock market is a reflection of what the economy is doing, not the reverse or the inverse. Uh, so great lessons, great takeaway that resonated with me at a take uh, away event, a, a meetup that I'm doing. Um, I do them every, every single week all over the country. Next week we'll be in Miami uh, doing a meetup. We're going to be in South Carolina doing a meetup, Indianapolis, uh, no, sorry, Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, we're all over the place and we're blessed to be all over the place. I had an extraordinary uh, day yesterday with the incredible Howie Mandel um, and uh, we're, we're just blessed, Jake. All right, Jake, go ahead. Uh, now that everybody's warmed up, reset the room real quick. Uh, email me if you want to take away of the day uh, lessons uh, and the rules of being human in the context of the life is about lessons. David at dmeltzer.com. 
always i will sign a book send it to you pay for shipping and the book don't worry and i'll also give the rules for being human or how to learn to raise your awareness of the lessons that resonate with you jake go ahead who's up all right thank you so much dave i will quickly reset the room this is david Meltzer's hour here on the breakfast for champions dave's been doing free friday training for over 23 years today's topic is your takeaway of the week so if anyone has a takeaway of the week that they'd like to share just feel free to raise your hand or back channel me and we will aim to bring you up also as mentioned if you want any takeaway of the week lessons if you want a rules for being a human guide if you want david's books feel free to email him his email is david at dmelzer.com david at dmelzer.com let's uh let's get going let's bring on some people to share their takeaways of the week why don't we bring on Gigi to start Gigi, if you want to unmute yourself and share your takeaways of the week welcome Hi. Hi. This week was my favorite because I have two takeaways and the most important is empathy. Uh, and because I became more compassionate and have more empathy, I started doing that with myself and I'm actually growing. And even if I get angry at something, then I go and say, if I was this person, maybe I'll do the same and just, you know, drop drag and roll and help me go back to center. And the second one is a quote that I heard which is, um, just a second, a discovery is a child's privilege. And the point is, you a child does, isn't afraid to be embarrassed and stuff like that. And that's why they discovered that everybody who invented anything, they attribute to their inner child. Um, so those were my takeaways. And yeah, I feel like I'm actually in growing a state, it says. So I think this was a pretty uh, interesting group with a lot of lessons i love that well thank you Gigi. and you know you talk about discovery and it's related directly to curiosity and curiosity is something that i look for uh to surround myself with curious people um one of my favorite and it's the closing line of almost every interview show etc that i do in speech uh titled be more interested than interesting and the process of seeking is closely related to praying uh, and to hoping. And so as we expand, grow, accelerate exponentially, it's so important that not only are we co-creative with something bigger than us that knows everything, that loves us more than our mom, but we're co-creative and curious that we're seeking our potential. We are seeking the truth. We are seeking our higher selves and inherent upon what you're talking about, this idea of discovery, uh, requires an action. And that action is not only co-creative, but that action is curious in its nature. And it's an essential attribute in order to pursue your potential. It's a central attribute in order to inspire others, empower others. We cannot do so if we are not creative and curious. And uh, that takeaway resonates with me. So I'm codifying that quote and I will be accessing it uh, for more content to help other people as well. Thank you so much, Gigi. Appreciate that great takeaway uh, for the week. Jake, where should I go for our next one? Awesome. That sounds good. Uh, Good enough. My takeaway, this is from Chris. Um, my takeaway is that nothing is more important to your self-improvement than taking action. Thinking, planning, talking, listening are all great, but meaningless without action. Um, and Chris, uh, completely agree, right? I utilize a triple A strategy. I'm happy to send the triple A exercise to everyone. Uh, and part of taking action is getting alignment, paying attention to what you want, who you can help, who can help you, how best to get that done and prioritize accordingly. But it's the second, once we have alignment of the what, the who, the how, and the now, now we have to take action. And part and parcel to the action is the third A, which is to prepare for adjustment, uh, to have an open mind, open heart, and open hand and radical humility that we don't know what we don't know, that pain, setbacks, failures, and mistakes are indicative that we have a better place, a better position, a better situation to be in, living in a world of protection and promotion because we do have faith. There's something bigger than us that knows everything and loves us more than our mom. 
And so that as we work through this idea of self-improvement, of pursuing our potential, that we utilize five levels of intention in the AAA strategy. Uh, once again, which I'll send everyone in my book. It's in my book, actually. So email me. But these are alignment, action, and prepare for adjustment. But you can't do so without doing things in the trajectory of where you think you want to be, knowing the meaning or lessons that you've learned, these takeaways that you've learned in conjunction with, in synergy with the trajectory or the progress that you want to make in aiming towards what you think you want, which is that prepare for adjustment part. But not only is it doing, but it's saying everything, thinking everything, believing everything, and feeling it as well. In the intellect, intuition, and inspiration, you will find that we can accelerate, aggregate, and compound our success and our progress, expanding, growing towards something that we think we want. So make sure, as you have mentioned here, nothing more important than your progress, your pursuit of your potential. And in order to do so, you gotta pay attention to utilizing the AAA strategy and give the five levels of intention towards the coincidences, the consequences, the karma in your life. It is the mathematical equation of luck. And uh, Chris, you nailed a great takeaway for everyone. For those people that I resonated with, go ahead, capture that takeaway. Go ahead and capture it. We'll send you the exercise, the AAA strategy. Happy to help. Uh, all right, Jake, who's up next? And my takeaway this week is unity. I think that a lot of things can be done if we unify our minds together like we're doing right now here on Breakfast with Champions here on Clubhouse. People from all different walks of life are coming together, sharing their different experiences. And uh, David, you've given me uh, an example before of how I can attract like-minded individuals on a thing I'm doing called Paradigm Awakening which is every Thursday, I'm bringing people together and it's, and it's unifying people because, because uh, I'm, I'm a believer in, in God. I'm a child of God, right? And, and in Scripture, it talks about how if we are unified and, and if we come together and be in the same mind and, and be uh, on the, in the same alignment of things, you can get things done much quicker and more efficient. And, and, I, and I have a dream that I can see the world coming together because I truly believe that we are all one misunderstanding away from fully understanding each other. And I see it more and more every single day when you walk out into your community and you, and you talk with people. If you, if, you, if you turn off the negative vibes, uh, whether it be with, with media or wherever you're getting that negative energy from, and you just go out there and you seek the positive energy and you can just feel the, the unity because we even though we're human beings, we're all souls having this human experience. And, and I truly believe the, the more conversations like I have, like here today with y'all um, and, and unity, it just continues to catapult my mind into the right direction, uh, which is love. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, then, then you can truly experience an amazing paradise as you're experiencing this thing called life. I love it, AJ. <laughs> Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's, I, I could go on and on, yeah. but uh, I'll, I'll end. Thank you, brother. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of a nuance to this takeaway um, because as we try to come together, the paradigm shift that I had, AJ, in my life is that I shifted my faith in oneness. I believe in that source like you, that God like you do, uh, that protects and promotes me uh, at all times, that knows everything, an omniscient, all-powerful source, which is part and parcel uh, to a system that's unified and abundant and infinite and pure uh, of thought, the truth. And so I believe that we already are unified. We have to figure out what we're doing to interfere with it and I'll stress fear because that's what we do to interfere with the unity that we already have, that we already are part and parcel to. And so the whole crux or paradigm that I try to teach people is I am. I am 
all powerful, almighty, all knowing. I am protected and promoted. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am healthy. I am happy. I am wealthy. I am worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am part and parcel to my family, my community, the world. What am I doing to interfere with it? F-E-A-R, knowing there's only two types of fear, fear of the past and fear of the future. And if I stay present in that one thought, in that oneness of the unified, abundant, infinite system of thought that protects and promotes me in part and parcel to that which is bigger than me that knows everything, I can only accelerate and grow at a rate in a, in a, in a, in a, a power that most people limit themselves or interfere with themselves of one of my favorite takeaways unification we are moving in that direction everyone we are all one let's figure what we're doing to interfere with it we have and live in a world of more than enough and uh, aj is part of that world with me thank you my friend for helping to articulate it in such a eloquent manner all right jake we are rocking and rolling we moving really fast here it's the takeaway of the week the month is your lesson that resonates with you to help everyone with the one thing uh that's really on your mind body and soul this week so go ahead jake set the room awesome thank you dave and thank you for sharing aj quickly resetting the room this is friday april 28th david Meltzer's hour here 6 a.m pacific time 9 a.m eastern time Today's topic, Dave's been doing free Friday training for over 23 years, is your takeaway of the week. So if you have a takeaway of the week that you'd like to share, just feel free to raise your hand or back channel me and we will aim to bring you up. Also, let's take a second here to follow the people next to you, follow the people on stage, and then, of course, share the room here. So you can share the room at the bottom. There's a square with an arrow. If you push that, you can share with your friends, family, and the whole community. So. Let's take up some more takeaways of the week here. We got Eric Patel on deck. Eric, if you want to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the week, welcome. Thanks, Jake. Uh, hey, David, and uh, good to see folks again. Love these rooms that you do, so thanks so much for that. I think this week was a big takeaway for me. It's a little bit about David talks about this book in terms of comfort zone and, and getting out of your comfort zone. I think in general I've been doing a much better job of that over time. But this week was really a lot about letting go and trusting others. Uh, we had a new team member who recently we onboarded who led a very important, very public call um, for our book launch, and she did an amazing job. And, you know, just being able to just go with the flow and trusting others, um, just not having control or having the need to have control all the time. Um, you know, this, there's other concept too about surrendering, right, to the flow of life. And, you know, the universe does have its amazing way of, of making things happen for you, right? Um, I'm sure you've heard the expression, right? Um, life doesn't uh, happen to you. It actually happens for you. And that certainly happened this week. And it was just beautiful to see. And, um, yeah, it was just great. Uh, so thanks very much. No, thank you. And I'll take your uh, happens to you and happens for you and raise you one. Uh, I believe life happens through you. Um, and so, of course, uh, in that abundant thought of everything happening through us, giving and receiving are one. Witnessing the giving and receiving as well is in oneness with that as well. And um, when we let go, one of the hardest things for people to understand is that how can you let go and just let everything happen? That's not what it is, right? We're letting go of our knowing. We're letting go of certainty. We're letting go of attachment to the outcome. And instead we are taking our emotions, our attention and intention, and we're putting it into what we do say, think, feel, and believe today towards progressing towards what we think we want knowing that we're going to learn lessons and have mistakes failures setbacks along the way and successes that are going to teach us what and where we're going to move tomorrow and so instead of limiting ourselves by attaching to an outcome a certainty of a number a space a time we simply attach all of our energy our focus and our intention of what we do say think believe and feel towards progressing not an outcome in which we don't know what we don't know this is where radical humility and surrender exists this is how people like michael singer who wrote the Te untethered soul and of course surrender experiment tries to articulate a completely 
e uh, life of ease while still in each and every present moment being active and progressing and accelerating and growing see activity is not only uh working as some people say i call it activity i get paid for or sleeping i call that the activity of access and recovery or spending time with our family vacationing which i call activity i don't get paid for uh when we realize that each day we want to be as productive accessible and gracious with our activities while we are surrendering to the outcome by doing our best learning lessons from the setbacks failures and mistakes and having fun enjoying that consistent every day persistent without quit pursuit of our potentials extremely important takeaway uh have life come through you uh most people have life happening to them they're victims they're a why me not a try me most people haven't made the distinction between the happened for me and happened through me uh we want to lift ourselves even higher than happened for us uh by you know the people who give to receive or feel that the whole world is in their favor happening for them take it to the next level not only should you appreciate everything you have and acknowledge it by giving it away or not having any more but you should be comfortable asking for more not in a zero sum for but in a value add through uh take that final leap my friends you will live in abundance in that unified system of thought that we talked about previously wow what a great takeaway all great takeaways so far jake why don't we bring up the next person who do you got uh with us today Let's bring up uh, Jeffrey Klein. Jeffrey Klein, if you want to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the week, welcome. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was having an issue with the mute button. <laughs> Me uh, too. This is great. I, I love uh, the whole vibe here, and, and thanks to David for for you know being here and, and just letting us share and then pouring in. Um, Last night, I'm sitting on my couch getting ready to watch Survivor, which is a tradition of with my family. And I, I hear some uh, rack get outside my house. And it sounds like one of my twin 17-year-old daughters. Uh, so I go to investigate and In fact, it is my 17-year-old daughter crying and screaming at her boyfriend, uh, who she's been dating for a year. And they've had their ups and downs. and. Uh, so, Red, I was trying not to make this a reality show, so I went out and she was fairly hysterical and she came in, I, I told her to come in and, and she did and she settled down and uh, the, the crux of it was, you know, her um, kind of relationship thing for T is um, teenage daughters. You guys still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, as he says that, of course, it breaks up. Oh, Jake, can you hear him? He's breaking up. Jeffrey, can you step a little closer? I Maybe think it might be his connection, but I, I think I got the gist of it, Jeffrey, just uh, so you know. And if I didn't, we'll just uh, t take away. I have three daughters of myself and... Uh, I think one of the most difficult experiences and lessons is to allow uh, people to learn uh, their own relationships and their own relationships to relationships. And, you know, for me, uh, having beautiful, dynamic, confident young women as daughters now 24, 21 and 18, uh, they have had their boyfriend issues. Uh, and uh, my most difficult uh, realization or my participation in the perception uh, when they have uh, these challenges uh, is a statement that I usually give the boyfriends. I, I usually tell boyfriends two things of my daughters. One, hey, when I was 17, you and I, we would have been best friends. And they're like, really? Oh my gosh, Mr. Meltzer, thank you so much. And I literally look at them and say, no, that's not a good thing. Uh, because I was just as big of an idiot when I was 17 as you are right now. Or I like to tell them 
as uh, some of them are very Eddie Haskell like. Some of you may know who that is. If not, Google it. Uh, they're, they're kiss asses basically. And I will tell them as they're leaving, you know, hey, bro, you're not fooling me. Uh, both seem to at least set a stage of my expectation of how you should be treating my daughter. Um, and I find it very difficult, uh, you know, not to utilize uh, the lessons that Charlie Bar Charles Barkley gave me. He has three daughters and I was going through the same thing when my oldest hit 17. And he said, Dave, I just have to be honest. He said, uh, you know, the only way I can deal with the boyfriends is when they come to the door, the first boyfriend comes to the door of your oldest daughter, just shoot him. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, the word will get out. <laughs> he won't have to worry about it anymore. Um, I thought that was pretty genius. Anyway, I'm sorry that it broke up on you. I know that wasn't probably the best takeaway uh, or interpretation of yours as we were breaking up, but please email me if I didn't get to your takeaway uh, yet or you're breaking up, david at dmeltzer.com. I'll throw in a book, sign it, send it to you, pay for shipping. Not a problem. Uh, Jake, I think... Uh, we have, uh, why don't you reset the room and then we'll bring uh, Patrick Sells on. Let's do it. And Jeffrey's sending some emojis. So he is here in spirit. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Let's, uh, yeah, let's bring up uh, a guest here. Let's bring up Patrick Sells online. But before we do that, I want to quickly reset the room. This is David Melter's hour here on the Breakfast with Champions. Today's topic was your takeaway of the week. So any takeaway of the week that you didn't get a chance to share, just feel free to email David. His email is david at dmelter.com. David at dmeltzer.com if you want to share any takeaways of the week that you get a chance to share. Thank you everyone for being here. Let's continue to share the room here on Clubhouse. You can do that at the bottom. There is a little square with an arrow. You can share on your favorite social media platforms, text messages, and then of course here on Clubhouse. Let's continue to share the room and then let's bring up Patrick Sells online. All right, Patrick. Welcome, my friend. We appreciate you. He's the co-founder of True Digital Group, and you can check them out at truedigitalgroup.com. Um, we're talking about takeaways and lessons, and there's so much to discuss, Patrick, uh, in innovation, banking, fintech, uh, with the True Digital Group, um, and understanding where we're at today uh, with the reality of our culture, the capabilities that um, finance uh, companies and, and banks have and credit unions have um, and also you know who has the money where is the capital as I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs that I'm coaching or businesses big businesses are like there's a change in the season so I'm gonna start there what would you say is the biggest takeaway for you uh, as we're shifting our economy again um, in your space of banking fintech uh with digital or technology uh relating to the community financial institutions that we have yeah uh, thank you for having me on david it's great to be able to meet you and participate today um you know true digital we do we, we serve community banks and credit unions uh and you know get to talk to probably 30 to 40 a week i think you know, the takeaway of this week is that community banks are actually in a really good spot. Uh, I think there's a lot of macro things happening that make them, you know, make people nervous, but most community banks, most banks have diversified balance sheets and they, you know, there's still activity happening. So I think there's, there's actually more of a sense of calmness than I think you feel on Twitter anyways. <laughs> you know, as much as technology uh, should be utilized as a servant, a lot of people see it as a master um, and they allow it to control uh, what they do. Um, and I've seen over the last 30 years as I've worked in technology since 1992, Web One, when people told me the internet, including my mom and Justice Scalia, you know, the internet would never work. Uh, it was a fad. You couldn't use it for research. You couldn't use it to buy things. Uh, it would never work. Um, th there seems to be a segregation now uh, where everything used to collapse together. And we saw this during COVID, that everything doesn't collapse together anymore. That when the housing market falls, the banks don't fall. When the, when the stocks fall, everything doesn't fall. And 
Um, what do you think has caused the security and stabilization in especially what was, you know, a, a key indicator that things weren't going well was the insecurity of community banks and credit unions? You know, I think the what I, I would say, I think the the the, the ability to build more com complex and uh, particular financial tools and instruments uh, that actually, while well, that can at times, and it has in our history been dangerous because sometimes the complexity of the tools were too great. But generally speaking, I think actually the financial system is getting, has gotten much better at being able to share risk, whether it's, you know, in different asset classes, et cetera. And so that, actually acts as like a, a strong safety net, if you will, because you don't have such, you don't have instruments that are so isolated with one type of risk, if that makes sense. And one of the things, you know, I spend a minimum amount of time every day uh, looking at AI uh, and understanding its capabilities, not what I call its collectability, but, you know, as I look at analysis, um, AI has been able to give me a great head start in my research and my analysis, the same way that, you know, when I worked with West Publishing in 1992 and we used Boolean language, it gave me a huge head start on finding the most relevant and recent case law or statute that was pertaining to slip slash S fall slash P quote unquote grocery store. AI does the, the same thing for me. And how have you been able to use AI in the analysis and research as an accelerant to finding out where and how we best can apply the innovation that you have at True Digital Group for community banks and uh, credit unions for better service, better stability, uh, better investment? You know, uh been, it's been fun playing with it and, and you know reading about it and thinking of different use cases. I think where I have found it most potentially helpful is in being able to take uh, regulations or policies, which are you know more complicated than not, and be to say, okay, hey, could you take this and explain it in a way that was simpler? And <laughs> I, I think I, I'm, I, that's so good. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I'm just laughing. I, I did a meetup yesterday at Van Nuys. We were up there for uh, Howie Mandel. And so before, like an hour and a half before we do this meetup and, you know, this really uh, successful person came and said, Dave, I just have to admit, I really like your stuff, but I don't understand all of it. And then we had a group of recovery people come in too. And, and you, know, you know, one of the guys was like, I, can you, can you explain this to me? Like I can understand. And then I told them all, I said, just put what I'm saying into chat GPT and say, explain it to me. Like I'm an eight, eight year old. And that's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah. You know, having, you know, there was about six, seven years ago, I'd never worked inside of a bank before. And then I did. And you are overwhelmed by, okay, all these different policies and how this affects this and that. And it's tough. And I think one of the things that that has done over the years is, you know, regulations and policies only ever get more complex. We never get simpler because we start thinking, oh, you need to solve for this or manage that. And so I think one of the things that's happened culturally inside of many banks is people know that like I need to behave and not do something that could actually jeopardize my bank or my customers or the financial system. But I'm almost don't know what to do because I don't know how to even understand all of the different policies that exist. I think it could be a really valuable tool in that case to help people you know, be able to do their jobs and not have to be experts in, you know, compliance and regulations. I think the other way I've seen it helpful and it's even for me uh, is, you know, how do you take something and you try to come with a new idea for something? You know, a lot, I think a lot of times I love that process of innovation and creativity and, and challenging assumptions, but I know it's harder for some people and I too get blocked and you can just kind of throw a you know, uh, a prompt in there and it starts you like thinking, if you will. Uh, and so like yesterday I had five minutes in between uh, a call and thought, well, I wonder if there's a cool award we could come up with that honored a banker. And in five minutes built a, an award, an email to the recipient, uh, information to the team about the process of what's going to happen, a blog post and a press release. And it took five minutes. It's pretty fun. So it's going to be the first uh, AI created award in banking 
industry. That is super cool. So, you know, we've discussed how culture is improved uh, through uh, the digital innovations uh, that you guys do at True Digital Group. Uh, we also talked about the finance and the finance security. What capabilities are most valuable right now um, that you're utilizing or empowering uh, the community banks and, and credit unions with? You know, so we're very focused on helping banks better manage and optimize their vendor relationships. You know, I, I, again, here is an example. I got to a bank and said, OK, you know, before that, I'd built a business as a marketing agency and said, OK, we need to you know, make some updates to the mobile app. What I didn't realize was we don't actually have our own mobile app. Most banks in the country use one of like seven you know, templates and they don't have control over it. And there's so many different vendors inside of a bank that do so many things. And if you looked at it from the vendors to headcount, I don't think there's any industry that could compare. And so how do you then, you know, use that to innovate and to try to do things cheaper, better, faster for your customers? It's hard because it impacts so many other things that are already in existence. And I think part of that is actually banked for one of the first industries in the country to adopt technologies. Uh, and so now you have a lot of legacy tech and legacy vendors, whereas if you could just go start a new company today, it's a hell of a lot easier because you don't have all of that pre-existing stuff. And so trying to help banks work through that, uh, if you will. It's amazing. Uh, so many great takeaways. Please, everyone, reach out to digitalgroup.com. Patrick Sells, thanks for allowing us to feel more secure, by the way, because uh, I think one of the things that creates the most insecurity is when our community banks and credit unions fail, uh, as we saw with some local banks here in California. Uh, but yet this stabil stabilization that has occurred because of companies like yours and also congratulations on all the amazing awards that you've won, not just created via AI, but war won including Digital Banker of the Year and 40 Under 40 Emerging Community Bank Leader himself, Patrick Sells. Thanks for joining me here. Thank you, David. You got it. Awesome. All right, Jakey Bakey, why don't you just quickly reset the room? I'm going to bring Laura Crenshaw up next, but maybe I'll take a, a, a quick takeaway. Go ahead, reset the room. Perfect. Resetting the room. Thank you, Patrick. This is David Meltzer's hour here on the Breakfast with Champions. Welcome, everybody. Dave, as you go on to your next guest, we actually have Monica here who wants to ask you a question. So why don't we take a quick question on here? Let's continue to share the room, everybody. You can share it uh, at the bottom. There's a little square with an arrow. Share the room with your friends, family, and the whole community. And, of course, you can share on Clubhouse, on Twitter, and all your favorite social media platforms and your text messages. So I'll bring up Monica. Monica, if you want to unmute yourself and ask Dave a question, welcome. Oh, no. Take away. It's a takeaway. Okay. <laughs> I think we have static. Yeah, you have static, Monica. We can't hear you so well. That? Awesome. Much better. Yeah. Oop. What happened, Jake? Jakey Big, can you hear me? I don't I can hear you. Monica, are you there? You know what happens? I, Jake, I gotta explain this to people. You know what happens when you have a lot of energy? It creates interference between the network and us. I, I do a show with uh guys like Rick Macy from the movie King Richard uh, for Serena and, and Venus Williams or with Dr. and Master Shaw uh, or, you know, Adam Jablin or Mike Diamond. These guys have so much energy and it, it always screws up. But I want to give it one more time. If not, I'm going to bring uh, Dr. Laura Crawshaw up, uh, if you don't mind. She's the boss whisperer. Awesome. Let's see, Monica, are you here? Uh, All right, Dave. Let's go. Let's go to Mon uh, Let's go online. Maybe Monica can join after this guest. Yeah, actually, Laura's also having a little bit of connection thing. Let me just get a takeaway online, uh, if Perfect. you don't mind. There's so so many. In order to live by the law of attraction, you also need to live by the law of Goya and allowance. Uh, the law of Goya, John Asaroff taught me from the movie The Secret. A good friend of mine and. Uh, that's get off your ass. <laughs> yes, uh, I think there's three levels. Uh, one, in responsibility, uh, we learn. In attraction, we learn. And in the participation in our perception, we learn. And encompassing all three phases 
is how we come up with control in our lives, control of our mindset, our heart set, and our hand set. And so if we can utilize responsibility to learn, attraction to learn, and participating in a perception to learn, uh, we can have control of our mindset, our heart set, and our hand set, what we think, what we feel, and what we do and say. And so in the crux of attention and intention lies this idea of the law of attraction, Goya, uh, that we utilize responsibility, attraction, and perception all to learn, uh, to do our best, uh, to learn lessons, and of course, to have fun. Um, and uh, these are uh, great takeaways, hopefully resonating with, with some of them. Uh, next takeaway, uh, while we're waiting for Laura uh, to connect, my biggest takeaway is the importance of identifying my fears so I can stop the moment I go unconscious throughout the day. I can then change my state of mind into a better direction, action. Um, yeah, so that's one of my favorite takeaways is to simplify what's interfering with me and my potential. And I know it's fear. I, I know fear is interfering, no pun intended, with my potential. And I know there's only two types of fear, fear of the past and fear of the future. And so I have gotten into a practice of identifying fear. Uh, fear of the past usually results into uh, guilt or regret. And so for me, if I feel guilty or regretful, or if I fear fearful and I can't determine what it is, I then try to look at what need do, do I have or my ego have? What need do I have? The fight, flee, feed, or fornicate. What need do I have prescribed to a fear that's interfering with my potential, with my uh, participation in the unified, abundant, infinite system of thought that protects and promotes me, knows everything and loves me more than my mom. What is it? Is it a need to be separate? Do I have a need to be separate from uh, a certain situation, event, person, idea, thought, words, beliefs, feelings? Do I need to be separate, inferior, superior? Do I need to be anxious, frustrated, angry, or guilty? Do I need to be regretful or resentful? Do I need to be offended? All of these needs start to create fear, which is a behavior that aggregates on itself, attracts more fear. It compounds on itself, so it's greater fear, and it accelerates upon itself, so it happens faster and faster and more often. And so if I can get into the practice of identifying fear, knowing it's fear of the past, fear of the future, and then prescribe the need that I have inherent within my being, the needs of the ego that edge goodness out, edge gold out, edge greatness out of me and limits me in my own self-image, then I can just stop, not resist it, not go over it, under it, through it, around it. Simply I can stop and then remind remember and recollect with the unified, abundant, infinite system of thought. I can have that approach that allows me to be part of the whole, part of oneness, part of the unification that we talked about earlier. Um, and so uh, that is uh, an amazing. Frank, uh, my uh, other friend here says, nothing happens until we move. Uh, another great uh, takeaway as well. Um, Jake, I'm going to keep taking these takeaways because uh, I'm not sure Dr. Laura Crawshaw, um, uh, she's the boss whisperer, is going to be able to connect or not. Is she going to be able to connect, uh, Raluca, give me a thumbs up or not? Uh, I can't tell. All righty. Anyways, there's so many good ones here. All right, next one. Identifying the role that fear can play in terms of interference with the practice of prioritization. By practicing ending fear, you'll be amazed at the ease you'll receive. Um, yeah. I think prioritization is a great indicator, a great confirmation for people that you know what's important to you. You see, in order to identify fear or even to uh, be empowered uh, to that whole, we need to know what's important to us. We need to know what we want to progress towards. 
Uh, we want to know who we can help and who can help us progress towards. And we want to know how best we can progress towards being productive, accessible, and gracious with the 24 hours in a day. Uh, and when we know uh, those progressions of what, who, and how, when we know where we're progressing and what's important to us, prioritization is easy. So that means that we know our now. Um, and if you want to read Eckhart Tolle and the power of now, uh, and understanding what it means to be present, which is a confirmation that you know what's important to you because you can prioritize and reprioritize and know what you're doing now and know what you're doing next, which creates extraordinary efficiencies, effectiveness, and statistical success to allow us to stay out of fear and to apply our why instead of search for it. Instead of searching for what you already have, more happiness, more health, more wealth, more worthiness, knowing that I am I am collected and remembered and reminded with something bigger than me that knows everything and loves me more than my mom. And therefore, I'm in the practice of identifying the fear that interferes with the wholeness or oneness or potential that I have. Um, another takeaway, soul level alchemy awareness was the takeaway. In the past, I'd settle. Now, does this align to my heart and soul? So the only limitations that we have are our self-image. So our only limitation in the future, we cannot overachieve our self-image. And so through a soul level alchemy, we create an awareness of what's interfering with our potential. Is it a limitation of usually a meaning that we give, a lesson that we've given ourselves of a defining moment, an inflection point, a mistake, failure, setback, or success, or a historical reference in my past that is interfering with my future. Um, and so there's kind of a reconciliation of the past and uh, the, the future. So um, very good. Let's see here. When spending time with family, you don't get paid financially, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally is pay dirt with such time. I think this, uh, Frank, is uh, directly related to the prioritization of the non-negotiables, um, where we're utilizing our time with the activity we have planned, don't have planned sleep, with the activity we get paid for, with the activity we don't get paid for. In the prioritization of time, we should have a non-negotiable that is programmed into the utilization of time, meaning that I schedule by time a minimum of an hour a day on my health first, as if I was prioritizing a, a surgery that I couldn't miss. It is every single day the number one priority because I know if I'm healthy, I get as many wishes, hopes, and dreams as I want. And if I'm unhealthy, I only get one hope, dream, and wish that I want. And so I make and create non-negotiables of a minimum of an hour a day on my health, a minimum amount of time with my family, my wife, my 13-year-old get more time than my three daughters, 24, 21, and 18. And they get more time each day than my mom, who I only need to tell every day, every day, seven days a week, knowing that two minutes a day equals more than two hours on a Saturday fixing her screen door. I tell her that I'm happy, I'm healthy, I love her and appreciate her, and it reduces any fear of anything else with the primary knowledge or, or request or intention that my mom has for all six of her children, that they're happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy, that they are uh, appreciative and they love her. And as long as you can communicate that effectively, we can clear that interference. Um, I assume, Raluca, that... Uh, Dr. Laura Croshaw is not coming. Give me a yeah, thumbs yeah. up. There yeah, we go. We're going to reschedule Dr. Laura, Dave. All right, perfect. Can uh, We got time, Jake. Why don't you go ahead quickly, uh, let everyone know that they can get the, the lessons guide, the rules for being human guide from me, uh, my book, everything, and then let's take another takeaway. Perfect. Yes. Thank you, Dave. There is seven minutes left here. If anyone wants any of those trainings or guides, just feel free to email David. David's email is david at dmelter.com. David at dmelter.com. Also, there, uh, today's topic was the takeaway of the week. So if you didn't get a chance to share your takeaway, 
just feel free to email David as well to share yours, and then we will bring you up next time to share your takeaway of the week as well. We've got seven minutes here, Dave, on uh, on Clubhouse. Do you want to uh, do you want to take another question online, and then we'll bring up uh, Bonnie to share her takeaway of the week? Yeah, that's great. Um, <laughs> so, um, and you know, th this is a, a takeaway uh, as we're planning so many things, right? We we have just a very active schedule all over the world from Sydney to Bali to Scotland to oh, Canada to we're VCon, by the way, we have this VIP dinner with Jim Quick and and all these great plans, Austin Eckler and Michael Chandler and Jeff Hoffman, the founder of Priceline uh, on May 19th in Indy. We got uh, Miami uh, with 90 family offices. I'll be down there May 14th and all these plans that we have collision up in Toronto. So if anyone is around, come join us in any one of these cities around the world. We'd love to see you. But this takeaway is applicable because we have more activities planned than most people, Jake. And uh, it says life is what happens while you're making plans. <laughs> and I always say, if you're going to make God laugh, come up with a well-developed plan. So as we're planning to be in Indianapolis uh, at our VIP uh, dinner at uh, VCon with Gary V. When we're going to be in collision up there in Toronto with another VIP experience, and then Miami on May fourth, we're going to be down there with all uh, Randy Garn and friends, and Kim Perel and many many others. I think Mike Tannenbaum is joining us, and uh, wherever we are, uh, life is still happening, and we want to make sure that we're present, that we are not living the life of should have and we can't should have all over ourselves every day and we want to live our life in the present and the prioritization of the present the antidote of uh these things that we're planning but we can't say i'm going to be so happy when i have this vip dinner in indianapolis i'll be so happy when i'm in miami i'm gonna be so happy in scotland i'm gonna be so happy in israel in sydney and bali i'm gonna be so happy be when my daughter graduates next week. I'm going to be so, no, I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I'm already in life is happening. Wow. I'm making all these plans. And so I, I think uh, Jay, thank you for that uh, takeaway. Cause it's very applicable to uh, myself, my family and my team. And I want to always remind, remember and recollect uh, that uh, we have to stay present in life and not attach our emotion to all the great plans that, by the way, God will laugh at those well-developed plans every single time. All right, Jake, we have time for one more takeaway. And uh, who do you got for me? Perfect. Let's bring up uh, Bonnie. Bonnie, if you want to unmute yourself here on Clubhouse and share your takeaway of the week, welcome. Hey, Jake, thanks so much. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, I wish every we could hear everyone as well as we hear you. Yes, we can. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I'm going to be quick. Um, I just wanted to share really my biggest takeaway is really leaning into um, I heard some other people talking about surrender and also your notion of prom being promoted and protected. And um, April has been full of that. As you know, I made, made it a long trip. Um, I had surgery last week. I'm still kind of slurring because I've got some stitches left in my mouth. And I'm actually kind of excited to see what's going to happen today because I was supposed to have them out. And I woke up and I think both of my boys either have strep or the flu. <laughs> <laughs> so no trip to the dentist. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to hang out with these a little bit longer. Keep perfecting uh, speaking with them in my mouth. Um, but it's it's funny how I've had a complete shift in my thinking to where normally I'd be wake, waking up and kind of freaking out about the fact that they're both sick. And I'm not happy they're sick, obviously. Um, but it's like, okay, well, what am I being promoted to and protected from? And if you'd like to expand a little bit more on that, I'll pause the mic. But thanks so much, Jake, for inviting me up to uh, share my biggest takeaway. Oh, well, what a great takeaway, because this is the hardest test on faith. Uh, when anything happens to our children, you know, I saw the movie about Emmett Till um, on the airplane when I was flying back uh, <clears throat> this week from an incredible event, by the way, Scaling Your Business, Tony DiSilvestro had a Austin Eckler and Magic Johnson and myself with the people in Virginia Beach. But I watched this movie and you know, this poor young man, Emmett Till, uh, was tortured and killed because 
uh, of the color of his skin. I believe he's only 14 years old. Um, and they recently, here, this was in 1955, uh, recently in 2022, passed the Emmett Till um, Act. <laughs> That's a lot of years. Um, and so when something happens that there's no explanation or no reason or no logic that could be put to how could this be protecting and promoting me? If you look at Hurricane Carter, Nelson Mandela, Moses, whoever you want to do and study human nature and history, we realize that faith, faith is difficult at times and it has no logic tied to it. And what makes it more difficult is that time is infinite. It's not in the man-made construct. So when our children uh, have a disease like strep throat or worse, or when things happen of s historical significance that you know are just unbelievable, that source or that there is someone that loves us more than our mom would allow uh, this to happen. We have to have faith that in the bigger picture of infinite, abundant system of thought in the omniscient, all-powerful, and all-knowing that believe it or not, this was the best thing that could happen, that we are being protected and promoted. Because remember, we are one and we are infinite. And that idea makes it very difficult to feel protected and promoted when we are living in the present, in the 24-hour day, the man-made construct of time. All right, Jake, it's 7 a.m. Pacific time, right on the dot. That means we got to close out the room and close out training. We've been doing this for over 23 years. If you'd like the rules for being human, if you'd like to come join us in Miami, Indy, Toronto, Scotland, Israel, Bali, wherever you want to be, we have a lot of meetups and VIP dinners and shows that we'd love to have you come to. Email me, david at dmelter.com. Close out the room, Jakey of the Bakey. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, me. everyone. Appreciate you. Remember, most importantly, be more interested than interesting. Whatever you want from me, I'll throw in a book. I'll sign it. I'll send it to you. I'll pay for shipping and the book. David at dmelter.com. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We'll see you later.